Welcome to Gallivant's Tastemaker Series, where we bring the most fascinating people from our travels around the world home to you. Alianar, welcome to our Tastemaker Series here at Gallivant. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I found your book because I was really looking for some great content on travel and it was so inspiring. Like I, I read on your bio that you worked for the United Nations. How did you make that jump from working for the UN to writing this incredible book? Well, wow, that's quite the question, but it's actually how the book starts. Um, I was living my dream life in Bangkok, Thailand, working for the Asia Pacific Regional Office of UNESCO um, for education. And um, it was a job that I absolutely loved. Um, I was working on education policy and reform in education for peace, well-being and gender equality. And as I started studying well-being for a project on happiness in schools, I started studying the science of happiness or positive psychology. Now, the dangerous thing with that is that as one starts looking into these big topics, you start reevaluating everything. Studying happiness made me think, what would stimulate me? What would make me feel alive? What would make me feel like so connected to myself, to others, and to the world. And immediately I thought about Latin culture and how there's just this joy for life, this connection, the importance on social relationships. And I thought, how do they do that? And immediately it came to mind by dancing. They're always dancing in their family situations. Um, any occasion, they just put music on it and dance. And so I came up with the idea, I'm going to learn how to dance. What, like, how did you get into dance? So believe it or not, I embarked on this journey as a complete beginner at 30 years old. And it's really the proof that anyone can learn anything at any age, including dance. I wanted to dance because it brought me joy. And unfortunately, like many of us that have gone through childhood ballet uh, classes, it, you're, they don't necessarily teach you to feel joy. I wanted to, to learn in, in an environment that wasn't... Um, confined to the studio, but that would let me dance on the streets. And there, I couldn't think of a better place of dancing in the streets than Latin America. And so this idea was, I wanted to be stimulated. I wanted to learn a new skill. And I'd taken a few bachata classes, but maybe just three or four before I had this idea. Um, and I'd already started discovering that as long as you know how to walk, you can dance, anyone can dance. And even if it's not perfect, as long as you're doing it and it makes you feel good, that's all that matters. And I just decided to take the leap and, and learn with locals in the country where those dances originated from. That was something that was very important to me, was to learn that dance where it was born. How did you begin this journey and where did you go? The immediate thought was, okay, I'd take a few months off, I'd take a career break, I'll go to Buenos Aires and I'll learn how to dance tango. This is probably one of the most common dance destinations. Um, and then I thought, but wait, I've been taking a few bachata classes. I should probably go to where bachata came from, Dominican Republic, and learn there with locals. Oh, but Rio Carnival, that has been on my bucket list my whole life. I need to go to Rio Carnival and dance in Rio Carnival. And then my mind just started exploding these ideas, thinking, but if I do this itinerary, I have to learn salsa. I can't go to Latin America and not learn salsa. But which kind of salsa? New York style? Cuban style, Cali style, Puerto Rican style, all of them. <laughs> and then along with some of my friends that I had a very dear Mexican friend who told me to write about this journey. I had no intention to write about it actually. She said, you have to write about this and you have to go to Mexico. And I said, but what am I gonna dance in Mexico? She said, oh, well we have lots of folklore dancing. So I ended up kind of accidentally learning a bunch of dances uh, that were completely out of my comfort zone because people just suggested these ideas. Um, and so the itinerary kind of grew and I thought about the kind of music that I like and the kind of dances I wanted to learn. And it became this kind of north to south curve uh, through the Americas. So, so you created your itinerary. How did you have the courage to leave your job and all of your belongings? Like, Did you keep your apartment in Thailand or what happened through your journey as you started this? So this was uh, the really tough part. I was absolutely terrified. What would people think? Because my career was really just taking off. I, I published, you know, at, a, at a, what I consider a young age, by 30, I already had published several research publications on education and well-being and peace. 
and I was already um, getting opportunities like being a keynote speaker and that's the moment that I was leaving. So what I did is I, I really took my time. I, I spent about nine months after making the decision to actually leaving and um, I took my time before kind of breaking the news and it's in a way it's interesting because at the time I didn't want to tell my colleagues that I was leaving to dance. I told them I was leaving to be a freelancer to go to Latin America. They all knew I was obsessed with Latin music, with Latin culture, with speaking Spanish. So they weren't surprised when I said I, I'm just going to work remotely. This was before the pandemic, working from home. Um, it was even in the earliest days of the digital nomad movement. I didn't even realize I was becoming a digital nomad, you know. Um, but I was. Um, the only thing I didn't say was oh, that the real reason was that because I wanted to dance, because I was afraid what people might think. And I think a lot of people always hold back on, the, on their dreams because they think, oh, what will people say of me? Maybe they won't take me seriously anymore. You know, I come across as such a, you know, career oriented workaholic. What will they think when I just want to dance in the street? Um, but in the end, everyone supported it, you know, um, and the original goal was only to take up to a year off and then return to the United Nations, um, which I did. And then I left for the second time because I realized that I changed too much. This journey was just so life changing. Um, but fortunately, I found the perfect balance in consulting. As a freelance consultant, it allows me to work from, any, from anywhere, um, to keep doing that work while having the time to dance and explore and travel um, and document my experiences on my blog and on my Instagram. Well, it's really a unique opportunity when you're able to take something that's a passion and really make it into a living, which mm -hmm. is extraordinary. And there's a reason why you're able to do that. You actually have this book that you created. Can you tell us a little bit about, about the book, like what countries you, you write about? Um, and, and also, I would love to hear all these gorgeous places you went to. What was your favorite place? Oh my goodness, that's such a difficult question. So this is Finding Rhythm, an international dance journey, um, which is actually um, chronicles the entire dance journey that I did in, that, in those 10 months after leaving the UN. Um, this story starts off in Bangkok, actually. It starts off at that moment where I'm making that life-changing decision. And then I go off onto my journey, starting in New York, going on to Mexico, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Brazil, and Argentina. And then it ends in the UK once I've returned home. Um, in each of these places, I feel I discovered a different angle uh, dancing was not necessarily the final goal. It was a lens. It was a window onto those cultures and onto those countries because it allowed me to discover the culture in a way that I never would have by visiting as a tourist. And it was just such a powerful way to spend time with locals and to connect with them in the most human way possible, which is to hold their hands, look into their eyes and dance with them, connected by the music. And it was just, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. So in total, I learned 18 dances. Each dance taught me something different about myself and about the country, uh, which was very surprising. Uh, I, didn't, I knew I would learn about the culture and the country. I didn't expect that it would tell me so much about myself and allow me to grow as a person. And so I can't really give a favorite. I can just tell you in which country gave me the best sense of body image, for instance, Brazil and Puerto Rico, um, and perhaps Cuba as well. Which country taught me to embrace softness and femininity. I'd say Cuban salsa really helped me with that. With, in, in which dance did I feel like a complete queen? Samba in Rio, obviously. You know, it, every dance gave me a different facet to explore. What's next for you on this journey? Because you're still consulting for the UN, but clearly there's something very special here that's happening with your book. I really do believe that if more people dance, the world would be a better place. I also feel that linking with my work um, at the UN, that dance is something that has a lot to bring to education, that it's something I would like to advocate for. Encompassing all that, on my blog, Bailando Journey, um, I've set up an online platform to support Latin artists who are struggling in the wake of the pandemic, who are struggling to perform or um, give classes. And something that I found very important is that these artists have given me so much. They brought me so much joy. And I feel I also have a duty 
to share the beauty of their work with the world through my online platform while supporting them financially and raising funds for them um, and creating these virtual travel experiences while we can't travel. Um, and as soon as we can travel again, supporting them with in-person retreats. Um, so I think that this is going to be a big part of what I'll be doing is sharing this journey so people can experience what I experienced in the book. Ayanar, your, your book is just fascinating. Your story is incredible. To put something in your heart to pen to paper is something that I think everyone looks at as their, their great American novel, their dream to be able to write something like that, but you actually did it. So congratulations on the book. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I can really say that my heart poured onto every single page in this book. I can tell. Well, we are gonna put Alianor's contact information on our show notes. We are also going to have information on Galavan's website on her future retreats, because guys, we are gonna be traveling really soon. Thank you all for joining us on Galavan's Tastemaker series, and we cannot wait to introduce you to yet another fascinating person that we get to meet around the world. Mm -hmm.